Welcome to Meet Houston Missions podcast. I'm your host, Paul Cannon, Managing Partner at Simmons & Fletcher. This podcast is about connecting people who have a heart to volunteer with missions that need volunteers, uh, and also to get the word out about what the local missions opportunities, needs, and desires are as far as uh, growth and helping the, the world and how you can be a part of that. So today, we have a special guest from Hope Impacts which is Tina Hatcher. It's good to see you today. How are you doing today? I'm good. It's good to be here. Thank you for doing this. You're very welcome. Thank you for being on the show. Tina, it, would you, why don't you tell us about Hope Impacts and tell us a little bit about what it does? Well, Hope Impacts is an organization that serves those that are experiencing homelessness, meaning that they're staying in a place not meant for human habitation. We know there's a lot of people experiencing homelessness that maybe stay in a hotel or maybe stay on a friend's couch. We specifically are here to meet the needs of those staying in a place not for, meant for human habitation, which means they might be staying in their car, or they might be staying on a street, or they might be pitching out a sleeping bag somewhere and then rolling it up before a business opens in the morning. We have a lot of growth in the homeless community. And our goal is to provide them with a place where they can have a safe place to be, community. We provide them with um, hot meals. We don't cook the hot meals here. We have different organizations that come and provide meals for us. We don't have a full kitchen. So Mondays, we have breakfast and showers and resources and referrals, and we do clothes, um, shoes. We connect them to resources that we don't provide. Like if they need to go to rehab, we'll make sure that they get the everything they need to get into a rehab or information about family shelters or refugee information. Or um, we also have partners that we partner with, like we partner with Christ Clinic and help them with medication. We partner with an eye doctor and a dentist and hair cutters and just provide people with a place where they're treated with dignity and respect. On Wednesdays, we're here for lunch and showers and we take them to laundry, but there's a limit. So like we have so many, so much capacity of people that we can serve, so much capacity of people that we can send to our resources. On every Tuesday and Thursday night, we do suppers and showers at a church in the community from 5.30 to 7.30. They can go in and get showers and a hot meal and a small pantry. Um, but they have to meet our standards and there's, we max out at 40 people in the evening that we can help. We're not like a soup kitchen. We don't have a shelter, but we provide a place where people can come get community and relationships and resources and meet their needs. Our goal is to love people where they are, but too much to leave them there. So for instance, we've had three people in the last week that have come to us and asked us about rehab. So we're doing everything we can to make sure that they can get that kind of assistance. We also are trained to do HMIS training, but we're maxed out on our case management right now. But what that means is the people that we're helping once they're housed, we will help them set up for success if they've come through, if they're a client of Hope Impacts. So we want to make sure that as an organization, we're meeting you right where you are. We're accepting you for who you are right now, but we want you to know we want to help you become the best version of yourself. And we're going to help you get to that point. Wow. What? So tell me, how big is the homeless problem in the Houston Katy area? Well, let me tell you, typically, I would say we're serving on a regular basis between 50 and 60. Last month, we served 128. Um, we've seen more and more families coming in with children that are experiencing homelessness. We've seen more elderly people that used to be able to live on their fixed income, but now they can't live on their fixed income anymore. So they go and they start, they stay in their car. We've seen people come in from other states that maybe were coming for jobs and then the jobs didn't work out. So now they're here and they're stranded and they don't have any income and they're looking for resources. Um, and we see people coming in from other countries that, you know, are trying to find safe haven. Um, and there's different organizations and resources for that, that we give them information about. So it's a growing problem. It's a growing problem for a number of reasons. It's a growing problem because the cost of living is skyrocketing um, and food is skyrocketing. Rent is skyrocketing. Um, you know, to rent a place, you have to make three times the rent. If you have a fixed income of $1,500 a month, you're not going to uh, be able to qualify for a thousand dollar apartment. Yeah, that's true. How do you find the people that you help? Word of mouth. Usually people that come into the community find out about us from other people who say, hey, there's a van that will come and pick us up here and take us to get a hot meal and a shower. Gotcha. Or, hey, if you if you um, if you need help, like today, a lady came in um, and she's like, you know, I'm almost out of gas and I need to get to an interview. Well, we we have limited resources, but I want to make sure that somebody can get to an interview. Right. So it's like, well, let's sit down. Let's talk. Let me talk about where you are, what your situation is, what your plans are, how we can help you. And yes, we want to help you, you know, make sure you can get to an interview. Do you need 
clothes to wear to that interview? And how can we help you get set up for that interview? Do you need to come in and take a shower before you go to an interview? Okay. And it, it sounds like y'all aren't providing housing, but you're providing yeah. all the basic needs that right on down to the showers that people need before they can go to a job interview or, or go wherever they need to, to try and get it back on their feet. Yes, we are not a shelter. We do not, um, we are not, do not get any state or federal funding at all. So we're, we're a small organization. We have three client, three uh, staff members right now. We've hired a new bilingual staff member that's starting next week part-time. Our mission is to provide hope and dignity to those that are experiencing homelessness through our core values of compassion, community, grace, and accountability. During the hot parts of the month, we opened as a cooling center, but we're not normally open five days a week. So we're open Mondays 9 to 1, Wednesdays 11 to 3, Tuesdays and Thursdays are by appointment only. We have Tuesday and Thursday night suppers and showers. We're closed as an office on Friday, so we can get um, appointments and administrative stuff taken care of. We're not going to pay your hotel bill um, sure. because we can't afford to pay bills. We can't afford to give everybody that has a car a gas card. But we're going to point you in a direction of, of, of assistance if we can assist you. The problem usually is there's a lot more needs than there are resources. And we can only do so much. So I heard you mention that there was a van that comes by and pick people up. Is that part of y'all's service to provide transportation from various points around the city to back to your location? Well, so we serve the Katy area just because geographically we we don't we can't go to Houston and pick people up. And okay. so we want to serve the area where we serve. There's a whole lot of resources in in Houston that we can right. send people to if they're in Houston, but we serve the suburb of Katy and the surrounding areas. So Katy serves part of Fort Bend County, Harris County, and Waller County. But I um, I don't have the capacity to serve everybody in Houston that's homeless. Enough, but there enough. are people in the suburbs that are also homeless. And so we have a 15 passenger van and we pick up from specific locations at specific times. Um, and they know that if they want to get a ride, they, like they need to be at you know, off of Fry Road at this location at a certain time, and we'll pick them up and we'll bring them to the office when we're open and we'll take them back, or we'll bring them to suppers and showers and we'll take them back. They find out where to go from people on the street, or they'll call us and we'll say, okay, we'll pick up from these three specific locations. You need to be able to get around to get there somehow, or to get to our office, because like we're not too far from Highway 6, but we don't even go all the way to Highway 6 because of, the traffic's going to take us you know, 45 minutes to get there, 45 right. minutes to get back for, you know, for a, a, a two hour supper and shower event. And we get pretty full from the people that we serve in our community. So um, we're not on the same um, scale as like the beacon or search or star of hope, or we're very small and we have gotcha. a very small space and very limited capacity, but we serve those that are in our community. Well, and you're doing what you can where you are, and that's what yes. missions work is all about. Uh, what's the saying? Uh, a rose grows where it's planted. You know, yes. Uh, yes. you guys were put in a location and found your calling to serve there. And, and you know, if 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 you're blessed and it grows bigger than that, that's awesome. But you're doing what you can where you are as long as you can, and and you never know what's going to come from that. You know? So I actually am the founder and the executive director, and I've been situationally homeless. Awesome. Due to my husband being laid off after 25 years with the same company and we thought he'd get a job. He didn't. Um, we couldn't keep our home. We had to rent it out. We went and stayed with friends for a while. I mean, if it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody. So this is personal to you is what it sounds like. It's, it's personal to me because I've been there. It's also personal to me because I've been in special education for over 20 years of my life. Um, I think mental health is something that we need to remove the stigmas from, but also people with mental health issues, um, there's, a, there's a percentage of them that wind up on the streets because they don't have the capacity to care for themselves and maybe their caregivers are not any longer able to care for them. They closed down the mental health hospitals. They deemed them, you know, um, not, not great for people uh, to be respected and be treated with dignity and respect. A lot of people in my life have had addiction issues. Not every homeless person or even a small percentage of homeless people suffer from addiction. But I believe that everybody needs a safe place to go. Everybody needs hope. If you provide people with hope and re relationships and community, then I believe lives can change. If you don't show people there, that there's something else that they have the capacity for and you're going to walk through that that journey with them, then they don't have the capacity in and of themselves to even maybe even have all of the resources they need to know how to change their life. Fair enough. So you were, you were telling us about all these 
different uh, events that y'all have throughout the week. Where where are you guys located? So our office is in Katy, Texas. Um, we're we're at 802 Dominion Suite 900 Katy. It's a it's a small office. It's not very big. Um, limited storage capacity, limit capacity to sit and do what we need to do. We make the most out of the space that we have. We partner with a lot of other organizations and nonprofits in our community. So um, like we'll send people to Christ Clinic and Clothed by Faith and Katie Christian Ministries. And we all we all do what we can do to make our community better. The resources are um, sometimes challenging to be able to have all the resources that are needed, but everybody can do something. We all can't do everything, but everybody can do something. And so when people walk in our door, the first thing we want to do is like say, hey, welcome. Do you need something to drink? Can I get you something to eat? Do you just want to sit down and cool off for a minute? Tell me a little bit about your story and what your goal is, what you're trying to do. And let's see how we can partner with you to make that happen. But if you call me and you're saying, hey, I need a shelter. Well, I'm not a shelter, but I can give you a list of shelters. I need you to pay my rent. Well, we don't do that, but here's some resources. I need to have my hotel bill paid for a week. Well, we don't do that, uh, but here's some resources. Because So sometimes it's just all you can do for somebody is care about them at that specific time in their life. I mean, I believe that a hot meal and a hot shower and clean clothes and a prayer and a hug can really make somebody's day. And maybe that's all we can do for that person. But that made a difference that day. How is Hope Impacts funded? Hope Impacts gives no state or federal funding. So we are funded through um, our partners. Like as So my, my theme for this year is be the change you want to see in 2023 and donate as little as $23 a month. It can help people with medication. It can help help buy, you know, a, an outfit for somebody. It can help pick gas for so somebody can get to an interview or a doctor's appointment. It can help buy a backpack. I would just say if a hundred people gave $20 a month, it would, it would be so beneficial for our organization to be able to help more people. We give them hygiene packs and food packs and clothes and backpacks and, you know, we help them get to appointments. Once, once they get a job, we help them get their uniform and their shoes for their job. If they don't have a car and they get a job, and when we, if we can, we'll get them a bicycle to get back and forth to work because there's no local transportation here. Um, so we do everything we can to help set people up for success. Okay. Um, but we also have a capacity. So it's like, I can't, uh, my goal is not to become as big as these big organizations. If As we grow and we reach uh, out to other communities, it's going to be very um, intentional and very um, specific to meeting the needs of that community because all the outlying communities outside of Houston, Texas, they all have needs too, and they have people in need as well. And so um, for me, I partner with a lot of organizations around Houston and in Houston and the surrounding areas, and I appreciate every single one of them, but Hope Impacts doesn't want to go and be in the middle of all of them. There's enough good work going on. We have our niche and our niche is you know, where we're planted to be working together, not working on top of each other. I agree yes. with that. Yes. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. You were you mentioned uh, about the funding. It sounds like you're 100% uh, donation supporter driven. So uh, we, we do apply for grants. We may or may not get them. We do have fundraisers. We're going to have a big fundraiser in October. It's our golf tournament on October 23rd at Weston Lakes. It's our biggest fundraiser. We do small fundraisers like Dine and Donates in our community. Um, we're, we're, uh, we've we're tried some different things. We did a designer bag bingo. We did an art gala. Um, we need more people to be involved in helping us do effective fundraisers. I'm interested in pickleball. I hear it's great. Everybody loves it, but I don't, I don't know anything about it. Um, I, you know, people like top golf and people like skeet shooting. And so um, I'm open to any suggestions of fundraisers that people want to help me run as long as they don't expect me to run it. <laughs> Fair enough. Having the help is a big is a big thing with a small organization. Yeah. Well, so if people want to go and donate maybe the $20 a month like you were talking about yeah. or however much they like to, where can they go and do that? Um, great question. Our website is hopeimpacts.org. And you can also get volunteer opportunities. So you can find out how you can volunteer in the office or you can find out how you can volunteer at a suppers and showers or for a breakfast or for a lunch. Also, um, just find out more about the organization. We also have a face, Hope Impacts Facebook page because I'm old and I do Facebook. Always encourage people to serve together. So we encourage families to come and bring their kids and serve. We have we have three generations of people that come and serve. We have neighbors. We had a Boy Scout troop that came and served dinner last night at suppers and showers. And we have social groups that come. We have 
business groups that come. We have church groups that come. So, you know, um, we're going to be rolling out our calendar for 2024 on our on our website in the next few weeks. And so we'll start booking for our events for 2024 by the end of the month. Okay. And if someone wants to book for that, should they go to the website and look up the dates? Yes. Or- so you go to the website and you look under um, volunteer and then it'll tell you what are the different points of volunteering. Um, and then you'll you'll have to scroll through the calendar if you want to do a suppers and showers and you'll have to find a free date. So right now we're pretty booked up for 2023. Like I said, we're going to start booking up for 2024. But like next week, we don't have anybody scheduled. We didn't have anybody scheduled to do breakfast and lunch next week. So wow. I'll go out and I'll buy stuff and I'll get it and if, unless we get somebody that'll say that they'll provide it. So right now our goal is um, feed 30 people during the week, during the day um, and feed 40 to 50 people at night during the week. And we're going to have to start capping it off at if it gets any bigger than that, just because we have two hour time period, we're doing meals, we're doing showers, we're doing pantry. So Mm -hmm. it's like, we can't, we can't stay for five hours. We have to get everything done in two hours. And so part of what we're doing is the accountability piece of it is if we've been helping you a long time and you're not and you're not open to changing your situation, then you're going to have to go take a break so new people can come in and get the help they need. Gotcha. Now, you can call me at any time and tell me, hey, I want to go to rehab or I'm ready to go see a doctor or I'm ready to call my whatever, my mom, my son, whatever, and um, and try to make amends and we'll, and we'll walk through that journey with you. Our goal is never to keep people comfortable being in a place not meant for human habitation. We don't want to we don't want to make them comfortable to stay in a situation where it's a danger for them to be in that situation. We want to we want to provide people with options and opportunities to improve their life. But with these events that you guys do during the week, approximately how many volunteers do you guys rely on each day for these type of events? So when we come to the office, we have so we have somebody help with meals. We have people help with the shower, with the clothes, with the administrative costs. Sometimes people are helping clients on the computer set up you know, their email or searching for jobs. We have people help answer the phones. So I would say probably eight to 10 people at the office and then at at suppers and showers, the group, we don't, we ask for no more than 10 people serving the meal just because we don't want more volunteers than people that are coming. It gets overwhelming. Plus we have regular, like six regular volunteers that are there. So, um, on a suppers and showers night, again, we have people watching the showers and people working in the pantry and people getting things set up and torn down. We also have musicians that come and play, which on Thursday night, which adds a really good um, ambiance to the events. So um, we try to keep it from being overwhelming. So that's why we ask people to sign up because you might have a group of 50, like we have churches call and say, hey, I have 50 people that want to serve. And I'm like, okay, well help them, have them come help me clean out my storage unit. Don't send them to suppers and showers. There's (laughs) events where we can, where we can have groups come and serve. Um, but the space alone, it it just gets overwhelming if too many people try to come. Fair enough. It sounds like if uh, you've got people who want to serve in a group setting that you can probably accommodate them by breaking them into groups of 10 or so for different uh, tasks and chores. And that way they're still together with their group, but maybe not a massive group of 30 or 40 in one place or something. Yeah. So a good example of that is we had a church where everybody wanted to be involved and everybody wanted to come. And I said, I I don't want to discourage anybody from coming. They can bring their kids, they can bring their grandma, but maybe instead of one event a month, you can break it up. And one, one group can do this month and another group can do next month. And they're both getting to serve, just not all at the same time. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, do you guys take donations of clothing or items like that as we well? We do. Um, yes. Yeah. So we have a we have a clothing pantry here. We're always looking for men's boxer briefs. We hand those <laughs> out regularly, um, and and socks. So, so underwear and socks is huge in in a community where you're outside all the time. We, we try to keep things season specific. So when it's hot outside, we take summer clothes. We always run out of men's like athletic shorts, t-shirts, size 28 to 34. Those go in as soon as we get them. And so um, we're asking people now, we need men's size nine, nine and a half and 11 and 12 tennis shoes. Even at Goodwill, tennis shoes would cost me 25 bucks right now. So I just don't have the capacity to go buy 20 pairs of tennis shoes at 25 bucks a piece. Fair enough. Um, 
And so for me, it's about what can we do to get the get the community to help us keep things in stock that we need to meet the needs. So we always need um, backpacks, sleeping bags, um, blankets. We need underwear. We need socks. We need batteries. We need foot powder. We need sunscreen. We need bug spray. Gatorade is a huge thing in this heat. We hand out a lot of Gatorade, um, water, snack packs, anything, hygiene packs, trial size hygiene stuff we take. Um, we also have a pantry. So we need like protein and fruit cups and chunky soups and beans and um, individual size chips and individual size cookies and like crackers and peanut butter or tuna fish and crackers or cheese and crackers or things that we can send with them that they can just pop it open and eat it or just open a package and eat it because they don't they don't have the capacity to cook it but like in our office I like to have like grapes and bananas and oranges and fruit and stuff that they can that's healthy that they can have while they're here um and then I always keep breakfast foods here. Coffee's a big thing. We go through a lot of coffee and a lot of creamer. Um, you know, we we put everything in gallon baggies. So we put their hygiene packs in the gallon baggies and their food packs in gallon baggies. And we send those with them out the door. Um, so there's a lot of things. If you think about what do you need if you're outside, like even if you're taking a 10 hour road trip, mm -hmm. like what do you need to make yourself comfortable? Like you need something to drink, you need something to snack on, you need something that isn't going to be a mess to eat in the car, or drink in the car. If you have to spend the night at a, at a, you know, at a road stop, what do you need? You need a blanket, you need, you know, you might need a, a, a small pillow. Um, you need something to wipe, baby wipes is huge so, so they can clean themselves off if there's not a place where they can go take a shower. Um, so even over the counter medication, you know, uh, some people have donated medical supplies um, because we might need somebody, we might have somebody that needs a walker or needs a wheelchair. Um, we do partner with Christ Clinic. So when we need those things, we do ask them for those things. Um, volunteers can volunteer from something as simple as come in and help file file folders or answer the phone to come and help organize donations or go through donations. If we get things we can't use, then we share them with other organizations that might be able to, like, we don't need a lot of dress clothes. So we give the dress clothes to Clothed by Faith. If we get stuff we don't That's need, true. we share it. This past week, we had somebody bring us 700 hot dogs and hot dog buns and chips. Oh, wow. And so I called KCM and we took them some hot dog buns and chips. And we <laughs> took a, re a rehab program we partner with some hot dogs, buns and chips. So, you know, we work together to share the abundance when we get the abundance. That's awesome. Well, that's great. Well, Tina, thank you so much for being on um, and telling us about Hope Impacts. Are there any other aspects of Hope Impacts that uh, I've forgotten to ask you about or we failed to cover that we need to go over? Well, I just want to say that, um, first of all, you don't know what anybody's going through. And so I would say no matter what situation or circumstance you're in, just look at people in the eye, smile at them and be kind. You may be the only kindness they see that day. Second of all, um, if you need help, ask for help. Because I think the strongest thing is people think it's weak. Like, I don't want people to know I have an addiction issue. I don't want people to know I, I struggle with mental health. Mental health has become a huge thing since COVID. I don't know who doesn't struggle with anxiety or depression since COVID happened. So don't be afraid to ask for help. If um, And... If you have, if you can be a blessing, be a blessing. It, it doesn't take a lot. You don't have to donate a thousand dollars. You can donate ten dollars. You don't have to sit down and invite 20 people into your house. You can meet somebody for coffee and just have a conversation with them. Just I think be aware of your surroundings is the biggest thing. Um, you know, I'm in this group and somebody was like, I'm really, I'm really struggling with depression. And I said, you know, the the for me, the biggest way to get out of myself is to go serve someone else and look for volunteer opportunities in your community. You never know what people's story is unless you sit down and talk to them. I think there's a stigma that's associated with homelessness where everybody is scared of the homeless, like they're dangerous. They're all addicts. They're all out to rob me. And I have 18 year old kids walking in my door that are that are more scared than the people are of, you know, I was in, I was in foster care system. Now I'm 18 and I'm expected to have my life together. And I don't even have a bike I can ride to a job interview or I'm 84 and I have cancer and I'm living in my car and I don't know where to go for help. I, I didn't even know I could have a place to go and just sit 
and get in out of the heat or take a shower and clean myself up or that I could go and get clean clothes. And so I think as human beings, we should care about other human beings and we should treat other people the way we want to be treated. And I also want to reiterate the fact that homelessness happened to me and homelessness can happen to anybody for any reason at any time. So I, I usually ask people this question. Have you ever known somebody that's had an addiction problem, a mental health problem, is on a fixed income, has been incarcerated, has been evicted, has lost their job, is unemployed or underemployed, has been the um, the victim of a crisis like, let's say, oh, maybe a, um, a flood or a pandemic or the death of a spouse or um, just starting over again in a new place where they don't know anybody and maybe that job situation didn't work out or maybe that relationship didn't work out and now they're stuck in a position in a place where there's no positive community and so all those things that i mentioned probably has happened to us or someone that we love and those are crisis situations that can face any of us at any time that would put us in a situation of homelessness and we and our capacity to expand our knowledge of what creates homelessness gives power to solving the problem of homelessness. So one of the biggest problems I think we have as a community in the United States is lack of affordable housing. I think that's a huge issue. We don't wanna raise our minimum wage past 725, but who can support a family on $12 an hour or even themselves on $12 an hour? And then, um, single moms and single dads raising their kids or people living on a fixed income of $800 a month, like where are those people supposed to go live? So let's address the problems and come up with a solution instead of just complaining that there's a problem without offering a solution. So I didn't go to college to run a homeless nonprofit. <laughs> um, I just did. I just started serving people on the streets for two years before I ever had a space because people need to be seen, heard, and valued. And that could be me, or it could be my son, or my daughter, or my sister, or my brother, or my mother, or my father, and they matter. And so I'm just going to say, be compassionate, be comparing, be, com be giving. Uh, I'm not going to tell you not to do what God tells you to do. I'm just going to say, if you want to give money, instead of giving 100 bucks to somebody standing on a street corner, if you give 100 bucks to an organization that is striving to change their life, that money can go a lot farther that way. But do what God tells you to do. Um, but as little as $10 a month can make a difference. And it's easy. You can just go to www.hopeimpacts.org. You can hit the donate button. It's all automatic. It's taken care of. You can send a check to 802 Dominion, Suite 900, Katy, Texas, 77450. Every amount matters. Um, the government does not fund us. And I don't want them coming in and telling me I can't love on people or pray with people <laughs> or offer people a Bible. If, uh, if that's what they want and if that's what they're asking for, I want to be able to give that to them. So for us, love God, love people, offer hope. And I think if we all just live that way, the world would be a better place. Amen to that. Well, thank you so much, Tina, for being on and tell us about Hope Impacts and all the different things you guys are involved in and, and how y'all are helping people. Uh, I think it's a wonderful organization. Um, if there's anyone else out there listening that is part of an organization similar to hers that's out there pounding the pavement, being the hands and feet of Christ, uh, that's who we're looking to talk to on this show. So reach out to Meet Houston Missions uh, or P. Cannon at SimmonsandFletcher.com uh, or dial 713-932-0777 and be a guest on the show. We'd be happy to have you here with some of these uh, great guests we have like Tina. Tina, thank you so much. Thank you very much. God bless you.